Um, this is the Ministry of Moses, part 103. The Ministry of Moses, part 103. We are going to take our text from Numbers 23, verse 18 to 26. Now let us consider verse 18 to 26. Then he took up his oracle and said, Rise up, Balak, and hear. Listen to me, son of Zippor. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. And will he, will he speak and not do it, or has he spoken and he will not make it good? Behold, I have received a command to bless. He has blessed and I cannot reverse it. He has not observed iniquity in Jacob, nor has he seen wickedness in Israel. The Lord is God is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. God brings them out of Egypt. He has strength like a white ox. For there is no sorcery against Jacob, nor there is any divination against Israel. It now must be said of Jacob and of Israel, Oh, what God has done! Look, a people rises like a lioness and lifts itself up like a lion. It shall not lie down until it devours the prey and drinks the blood of the slain. Then Balak said to Balak, Neither curse them at all, nor bless them at all. So Balaam answered and said to Balak, Did I not tell you, saying, All that the Lord speaks that I must do? Now from verse 19, we can see that when God speaks, He makes good what He has spoken. Now, sometimes the instructions of God may look to us like God hates us. But the end of that instruction is usually good provided we are obedient to it. Every instruction from God carries a certain dimension of goodness, though this may not look visible at first, but your obedience makes the good in it visible. Obedience is a converter. It converts the invisible goodness in the instruction of God into a visible good. In verse 20, Balaam revealed the major reasons is blessed, you know, he, he revealed the major reason he is blessing the Israelites, and from there it became clear to us that he is not blessing the people because that was his wish. If we could have allowed him to decide, then obviously he could have cursed the people because that was what he was paid to do. Along the way, God hijacked the entire process from him, and suddenly, the one that is supposed to be a cursor now became a blesser. You know, Balaam confessed by saying, God has blessed these people, and I cannot reverse it. Can you see that? This shows how incapacitated Prophet Balaam was. You know, Balaam was a master in cursing people. As a matter of fact, he had the testimony that his words are like that of God because everything he decrees happens without any form of, you know, any form of failure. But when it came to the case of the Israelites, God refused to honor his words like before. Though he himself could not explain why this is happening, but there was nothing he could do about it. Then in verse 21, he began to explain to Balak that you know, you know, he began to explain to Balak the reason he could not curse the people. He said, God has not observed iniquity in Jacob. With this word, you know, with the word Jacob, you know, that word Jacob was re, you know, it was relating. The word Jacob is another way of referring to the Israelites because we know that um, the Israelites are the descendants of the man called Jacob. Now, there are two people that can detect sin in a man's life. God can and also men can. People can check your life and find sin in you. 
but the parameters of judging for men is not usually accurate because men are limited to the outside they don't know what you do in the secret so they only judge you based on what they see you do in the open but for god he is accurate because he knows the actions that you perform both in the secret and in the open now for the bible to say that god has not found iniquity in them it will mean that at that point they were perfect before the lord they were holy inside and out now there was an instruction the lord gave them through moses his servant that the people obeyed and their obedience to that instruction was what translated into perfection for them just as abraham believed god and it was counted unto him for righteousness so also the israelites obeyed god's instruction through moses and that was counted as perfection for them he was also able to discern that the shout of a king is in their midst what does this mean the shout you know the king here is god and the shout is his presence just like the presence of a person can be announced with a shout so by that statement balaam was saying that the presence of the lord is with them he was saying that god is in their midst so when balaam said the shout of a king is among them he was indirectly saying the presence of God is in their midst because that king is God and that shout there means presence because you can know the presence of a man by a shout you can know the presence of a man by his voice I hope you understand now in verse 22 he was explaining the kind of strength with which the Lord delivered them from the Egyptians God won't deliver them with such a great strength only to come and waste them before their enemies god has plans for your life he is not you know he's not keeping you safe so that your eyes can see evil he is not keeping you alive so that you can suffer while others are enjoying god won't give you long life because he wants to afflict you with sickness the plans of god for us is of peace and not of evil now in verse 23 the bible reveals that there is no level of enchantment that will work on the israelite no matter who is doing it and what the person doing it is invoking it will not still work imagine a sorcerer telling those who invited him that his sorcery won't work imagine a killer that was 